at Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. But anyway, Love and Marriage Huntsville, boy. All Man. I gotta say is, Maurice, boy, you what? Man, you <laughs> was lit in Miami, bruh. God, don't. <laughs> it remind you of a few things, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> Lord yeah, have mercy. Man. Before we get into this guy doing review, thank you all for hanging out with us for these recaps. I'm telling you, this show right here, I started doing it just because I seen some nice black folk and I felt like I wanted to get on the bandwagon and support black shows. But this is becoming one of my freaking favorite shows. Yeah, and man. I don't even know why. And then yeah. when the cast reach out to you, then you get a little personal relationship uh -huh. with them. You know, not a whole lot, but enough that you be like, God yeah. darn it. I like these guy doing people. Yeah. So much so that Lauren, last week, we had put it on out there. We said, mm -hmm. listen, Marceau. What's the five year plan? We, we need to know. What's the five year plan? Well, Marceau was like, I'm going to give it to you. Here it is. He so came I'm through. You. The five year plan of how what he said had went down. So Marceau said, okay, here is the five year plan. He said, I worked as a GM at a movie theater slash restaurant, and Letitia worked at a bank. Mm -hmm. We also owned several homes and a few apartment complexes. When she got pregnant with with our, her daughter, <laughs> our third child, she wanted to stay at home. Of course, I wanted that as well, but I didn't want to push it. We looked at the cost of daycare and the plan was for me to grind, sell our 60 unit apartment complex, mm -hmm. become a general contractor, and she managed our current apartment that has 12 units. Mm -hmm. Oh, I said, okay, okay. Uh -huh. All right, now now it's like starting to make a whole lot I, I of sense. I like that, I like that. Then he said, she was going to go into commercial development, not getting a license and becoming an agent. Mm -hmm. And we were going to strategically align the companies <clears throat> after she got her CCIM certification. The itch for her to make more personal money by selling uh, residential real estate. Mm -hmm. Play your role is simple, <laughs> which is a mind blow. Yeah, I can't talk. Mind, we've had a crazy weekend, y'all. Yeah. Mind blowing statement. Letitia owns eighty five percent of our company and one hundred percent of the commercial development. Wow. She sold her apartment complex, the twelve unit, and bought controlling shares of Schult. She is the owner. Wow. Of Schult. But. Like a football team, the owner, the owner wants to play quarterback. I'm the coach. I say play your role. You are needed where you are. The quarterback's job looks fun, but your role is the owner. Owner. Wow. If what? that don't sum up a whole lot of skit. Yeah. So. That's the five year plan right there. That's five year plan. So I know that that is going to kind of shape your mind and, and your thought processes when we're going forward in these reviews because yeah. now you kind of know where he's coming from when mm -hmm. he says certain when he, things. When he's making his stance on certain stuff, yeah. It's because the plan is right here, it's detailed, it's uh. working, and Letitia isn't just a stay-at-home wife that has to depend on her husband for everything. Uh -huh. She has means and controls in other yeah. places. She is an owner. She's an owner. owner. And I'm oh, like, business. yeah. Okay, so I got it now. Yeah, All right. yeah, it, yeah. So starting off the episode, Letitia and Melody met up. And they went to have lunch, and they started, you know, having a little banter back and forth about Letitia going back into the workforce. And Melody shared with her, listen, if this is what you want to do, I am 100% behind the fact that you need to have your fulfillment in life as well. So if this is what you want to do, I have the blueprint for being a successful wife, mother, and a business owner or a working woman. I said, oh God, this ain't going to go over well at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. So I got what Melody was saying. I can teach you how to do all of those things and balance all those things. But at this moment. Yeah, when she <sighs> when she talked about that she left Martell for six months because of his cheating. Because of a, everything that's yeah, going, but going That's a different blueprint. Yeah. Yeah, Marceau didn't commit infidelity. Yeah, he didn't do that. So that's a whole different thing. 
And so I was taking it that she was like, maybe you need to leave Marceau for a little while so you can get what you want. Like, don't I didn't listen, take it as don't that. Don't you listen to that bullshit? I took it as whatever comes of you doing what you need to do to make yourself feel fulfilled, the consequences may be that at some point things will change. And this is how it changed for me. And I ended up leaving with me and my children for six months. And doing what I had to do because a result of us being so streamlined and business focused, somewhere around along the way, my husband lost his way mm -hmm. and did what he did. So the cause of the fact was this. Well, I say she should not be even brought up to leave she six should. months. Well, yeah, no. I mean, as far as allude as that as that extreme. No, I yeah, don't think it was an illusion. I, I, an illude. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was. I don't think the two were. But she kind of took it as that, though. No. When she asked, when she, when she asked, what you call do you think that she's trying to say that you need to leave? That you need to leave. I don't know. To get the respect that you think you should get to be able to go back into work for us. So, so later on, that was still on Letitia's mind. Kimmy was over there getting her hair done, so she went on over there where Kimmy was getting her hair done, and Letitia was like, "Listen." Me and Mel had this conversation. This is what she told me. She has a blueprint. She wants to help me. And, and Kimmy was like me, like, no, the that, blueprint. That, that's both. The blueprint probably does work, uh -huh. but right here, right now, that's not the person that you need to be taking advice from right now until their skit gets on the right train. Mm -hmm. So, and I agree with that statement wholeheartedly. But Letitia, you know I love you, girl. But why in the hell are you going over there spilling tea? Yeah. There are some things that your girlfriends tell you mm -hmm. that you don't have to share with nobody else because they trust you know as private as Melody is and how she has kept a whole lot of stuff to herself for her to come out of her mouth and tell you something as detailed as that and so as personal as that, mm -hmm. she trusts you. Yeah. So don't betray her trust by going and telling somebody, not only did you tell Kimmy, which Kimmy probably would keep it to herself, mm -hmm. but you said it in front of the hairdresser. Yeah. <laughs> who don't really have she probably gets yeah. you bucks <laughs> yeah so she gonna definitely go and spread yeah yeah and she probably know somebody that knows somebody and you know how it is in the salon and everybody mm -hmm. talks so she probably yep. already heard a little t and then she be like yep. oh okay <laughs> yep. so don't do that no more so Kimmy was like no don't you know, take that with a grain of salt. Don't yeah, don't, don't be going yeah, around bucking your skin up, taking advice. And then sometimes, I'm just gonna put it out there: when your skin ain't working, sometimes it feel good to pull somebody with you. Uh huh. Misery, so, misery loves company. Misery loves company. Misery loves company. Yep. And I like me some melody, but sometimes the way she moves just be like, what? But I also have this question. Me and him said it when we were sitting there. How good friends are y'all? Yeah. Like for real. None of y'all knew that her and her husband were separated for six months. None of y'all. Unless it's just the editing of the guy throwing show to make it look like you didn't know. But it should have been obvious because as close as y'all were. Yeah. And yeah. then I missed this part that when they had the massages over there, that was their house. But um, I didn't realize that was their house. I was house? Um, Melody and um Oh really? Yeah. Oh I didn't you even missed it too. Yeah, I missed that. And they were like, Oh, we've never been to the house. But maybe so you, but, but thinking about it, going back because Melanie and um Martel skipping ahead a little bit, they was like they was like in their twenties when they got married like we were. Yeah. So I wonder I'm not sure how far in the marriage that he started cheating, so maybe they wasn't friends back then. And maybe became friends a little bit later on. That would make sense. And then, you know, fast forward up until now, Melly told you, yeah, back then when he started cheating, I left him for six months. Then I could see you not knowing that, you know. Yeah. If y'all weren't friends at that point. So that's what I'm thinking, maybe. Um, but we know how editing goes. So sometimes yeah, editing yeah. will make you think that something happened two years ago and that skit was 20 years 20 ago. 20 years so. ago, yep. Um... Kimmy was having a conversation with Monster, but first Monster had a conversation with his mom. He was like, Mom, I'm about ready to go to Miami. Well, I'm going to Miami. Got my shades. Got my stuff ready. Oh, Mama, by the way, did you know that my daddy and Kimmy were getting married on a yacht? The mama was Said, like, um, no. I have to go back to work. I gotta get it. I said, what the hell was her, that? Her face broke. I was like. I've seen that. I've seen that a lot of times though when somebody's with somebody else 
and it don't work out with them and they get with somebody else and the treatment looks better. So I don't know how he treated her and what they had, but now- I'ma look, tell you how but, it went. But fast forward, you know, he a millionaire now, getting married on a yacht, going to Miami. It's like, I ain't get that skit when we was together. What's going on with us? <laughs> Why couldn't you do that when we was together? <laughs> can, can I? But I know you had that experience though. What the hell is you talking about? I thought so. You could you told me you told me uh somebody that you was with, I ain't call no name, <laughs> and say after they left you, they started bettering themselves. Yeah. 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 I ain't saying that's you, Maurice. So I don't know if you <laughs> I don't know if you won't do a skit well, with hell, her. We went together since we was our twenties. You couldn't do nothing but be better. <laughs> God don't. She was a teenager, so I'm sitting here like, who the hell are you talking about? No, I ain't not talking about me. No, no, no. I'm, I'm trying to tell me who you talking about. Oh. We'll talk about that one. Yeah, we yeah. Because I don't want to call no names out of them. I don't give a rat's ass. Hey, you just know it was somebody that she said she was with that won't do a skit. She left them and they went with somebody else and started doing battle. But they ain't had no choice. Yeah. Back then. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to tell you what really happened around there with um with Maurice's um, ex-wife. Oh, I got shea butter under my fingernail. Uh, Kimmy and him getting married on the yacht. And she think back to the days where she had to go to David Brottle and get that $599 dress, <laughs> put that sucker on layaway, <laughs> go down there and ask her uncle to marry them at the church, mm -hmm. had to ask their aunt Beatrice to fry chicken for the reception. Had that savings account that was saving up for the wedding? Barely. Uh-huh. You had that limousine that you got for three hours? Yep. And now y'all niggas getting you married on a yacht? <laughs> what? What is this? I got your whole son over here. Mm -hmm. That's what really happened in her mind. She was like, wait a minute. Seven whole days? <laughs> I could hear her cussing him out in her mind. Oh like, yeah, she was She was done. S-O-B? She was done. <laughs> done, 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 done. Ooh. So now we get ready to... We get ready to hit Miami, y'all. And this is where it all just... Just all just went to hell fast but it with the fellas no, but, it, no, no, but no. it was fun though it no. was it, it didn't it hit it went to hell before they got there with the hopes oh yeah yeah and let's yeah, talk about yeah, these hopes yeah. they ended up having this conversation right i don't know if it was a conversation slash lecture slash argument but all i know was <sighs> martel pulled out the big guns and just just threw it right at her, right in her face. Basically, he said, mm -hmm. I cheated. Yeah, because you wouldn't satisfy me. In the bed. In the bed. And when I called, mm -hmm. you, you didn't wouldn't. have time for me. You wasn't cleaning. You wasn't cooking. You won't do any other things that I needed you to do. So you opened up the void. I mean, you opened up the windows for everybody to come on in here and fulfill my void. But the thing about it, and she said this, I don't know if you missed it. She I said, didn't miss she it. said, but. You, you was the one that had me out there working like that hard and stuff like that to push the business. So I really didn't have no time to be having a whole bunch of small talk with you because I'm out here hustling. And she said, but was that your plan? Yeah. Was that your plan to make me busy so that it would look better for you to say this was the reason why I, I went cheated. out there and cheated? Mm -hmm. So then she was like, hold on. So if you're saying that the reason that you cheated was because you felt neglected and that I wasn't doing some of the things that you wanted me to do in the bedroom. How about me wanting you to do some of the things that I wanted you to do in the bedroom? Like talk dirty to me, this, that, and the third. He was like, Is that a I don't recall that. <laughs> yeah. So she said, yeah, you never recall when it's something that you did. <laughs> but she was like, so that would have been good enough for me to go out there and cheat, right? Mm -hmm. Or oh, he had no answer for that. So she was like, well, maybe I should have. Maybe when you didn't talk dirty to me, I should have went on out there and did what I, I had to do. Uh-huh. Get somebody else to talk dirty to me. So then she went on. She said, you know what? This other woman that you had out here says she seems like you needed her to talk to you. Clean, cook, cook, cook satisfy you sexually. Just go, go ahead and be with her. You said, I don't want to be with her. I want to be with you, but she feel devoid. I said, yep. And he, he said it like he was right. But the thing about it, what he what he was saying was, is that the value is in melody. That's the value. The side piece doesn't have value. They just come they with benefits. Do. They just come with some short-term benefits. So we would throw away the long-time contract to get the short-term short -term contract that's going to end soon. That you probably ain't gonna end up with the person when the long time. Because you don't want them. Yeah, because you don't want them. You just want them for the benefits. 
And so that's what he was saying was she fulfilled my short term contract, which was a uh, puss move because you could have worked out that contract with your wife. Yeah. Cause she said you never came and talked to me about it. He was like, well, I kind of did. I told you I want you to do this and I want you to do that. No, that's not talking no. about what you want and what fulfills you. Mm -hmm. So you just, I mean, you was young and dumb. So yeah, cause when you're yeah. young and dumb, everybody just want to pop, yeah. pop, pop. But yeah. Over time, you learn what everybody likes. You learn their bodies and all. Like I told my husband, I don't care what the hell happened to us. We still gonna smash. Yeah. I don't care if you move on. I think you, I, yeah, it's gonna be smashing See, too and like people. I like I told you, what what the thing about it? Freaking the porn industry got our mind fucked. Yeah, it does. And we thinking that that's how it's gonna be. Is that people's gonna be spinning around, throwing all over the place? That's rehearsed, edited. They put they fulfill the fantasy that don't exist. Oh, it does now, exist. No, it just it, don't exist every occurrence. Yeah, uh, or at that level all the time. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's exhausting. When y'all was in your twenties, you could do a whole lot of skit, but now you in your forties or fifties, you can't do that skit no more. Not at that well, level. Not at that level. I mean, you still can be, you know, freaking, but you know what? You you know you catch a little bit of muscle cramps and stuff now. You know. <laughs> so you got to be careful because you got to stay alive to have sex another day. God damn. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it at that. I don't really have time for you. <laughs> so Melody was like, you know what? What it sounds like you need, and like he was saying, you need two women. That, that's what it boils down to. It sounds like you need two women. He said, well, back in the Bible days, they did. So he realized that he had dug himself in a hole uh -huh. that was knee just, deep. Yeah, he just kept on throwing shots, throwing shots to get out. And like James said, then he started backpedaling, pussy popping it. He tried to do a little, uh -huh. a little jokey joke to try to break. Uh -huh. Cause they're really good at throwing them jokes mm -hmm. at the right all, time. All I, want is, all I want is you. Yeah. And she was like, ho, ho. And then she was like, you know what? You keep on going out there doing what you need to do, what you feel like you need to do. And that D word is going to be on the table. And he was like, well, don't play with me because I'll be the one I'll to initiate I'll be the one to it first. I said, here we go. <laughs> so then it was time to go to Miami. All of them, the other people, they, they landed in Miami. The Scots, whole bunch of their friends, different stuff like that. Everybody's laying down the ground rules of what's going to happen at these here parties. I was like, why? Because it, 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 it ain't going to pan out that way. You just going to give people a reason to lie. Just yep. be like, just say, I hope that you're going to be on your best behavior. Mm -hmm. And that after everything comes out, I still look at you the same. Especially when I saw what they gonna be, what they was gonna be drinking. Yeah, I, I knew. Yeah, I knew. It was Cause gonna, that dawn. Yeah, that that that. Uh, yeah, that tequila man. Yeah. Yeah, it ain't nothing to buck with. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you you'll be like um, Phil on Hangover. Did, did did we get raped last night? <laughs> yeah. And, and why do I have a tattoo on my face? So the women all got together. And this was kind of calm at first. The bachelorette um, dinner was kind of like, oh, okay. And I said, I know this ain't what Kimmy going to go for. I, Kimmy got a little turn up at her. Yeah. Where is it at? So mm -hmm. eventually they got on a party bus and they was doing their thing. Now, mind you, when they first had like this dinner with the core group. Yeah. Melody and them hadn't showed up yet. They were still in Tennessee. Yeah. So by the time they got to where everybody in the bridal party and everybody had flown out, got together and had dinner, she did show up to that late. She got on the party bus, but she wasn't enjoying herself at all because yeah. she was worried about what was happening over there. At with, the bachelor party. And she should have been. <laughs> because over there with Maurice and them, it started on the roof at first. The hangover. And, and I said, if this is going to be a hangover number four right here. They had, what's the boy nigga? I wrote it down because I said he was so funny to me. Hussein. Hussein, yep. Hussein had got toe up. He got real sentimental. I'll tell you what, Hussein's wife, you better be proud of that man because when he got drunk, he declared his love for you. Uh -huh. He said he'd bury you a few more times. Uh -huh. He said I would do it two times over. It gave me my child. He said, man, you know what? He said, a year from now, you can be saying the same thing I'm saying. He right said, now. I feel like crying right now. They said, tears, 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 tears. Everybody tears. was looking at him like, don't do it, DJ Khaled. Do don't, don't do it. Don't do it. So they ended up going to the strip club. And it all. It all went the, to hell. The tequila kicked in and it all went to hell. Facts. Maurice came in there. He was ready. <laughs> Maurice came in there. 
with the shades on. I said, okay. <laughs> he ended up on the stage. He was on there doing. <laughs> he was the stripper. <laughs> he slid down the pole. Oh. I said, Maurice, what the he's going on the ground, on? going up. <laughs> I said he was air humping. He was doing the butterfly. I said he was making it rain. I was like, Ma, so bruh, you ain't gonna get your brother. He out there now. Pull him back. Pull him back in. That's the time when you be like, bruh, bruh, bruh you're about to get murdered. But now, he thought it was funny. And That's you it. on TV. <laughs> you on TV. So not only do we know that you was lit up on that stage, the whole world know now. Then he tried, I don't know what he was trying to do. Was he doing some WWE? I, I don't know what but he But he almost broke one what, of the strippers' necks. Yeah. <laughs> he took a, his leg and did a turn. Said, he was throwing money. He said, he said, I don't know where all this money coming from, but I'm trying to make it right. He said, oh, a puddle. Uh, and yeah. it was a woman walking by. She looked like old deaconess from the church. Uh -huh. He said. And she just kept on walking. She had a dollar bill on top of her. <laughs> on top of her. So then. We look over there at Martel. Martel does not drink or smoke. So you know it didn't take anything for uh, Martel. Just a little bit. First of all, why did you... <laughs> we had this incident this weekend. Yeah. If you have a friend in your group that don't do skit, don't put them all the way out there like that. Yeah, because it's going... It's going to end bad for yeah. everybody. Because somebody's going to have to babysit this food. Let's just put it this way. The, <laughs> one of the people that was out there had to be taken home and... They was in the car. They thought they was on a roller coaster. <laughs> Just put it like that. <laughs> That's the weekend we had. <laughs> and every time I think about it, I just... <laughs> and he said, well, just close your damn Just close your eyes. And be on the ride. And on the ride till you get home. <laughs> Can't even make this stuff up. Ooh. So Martell is over there, and they say when Martell... Um, Comes his alter ego is named Marcus. Marcus, because he said Martell is in the truck sleep. And Marcus, <laughs> is in. Marcus is in here. He grabbing the <laughs> microphone. He DJing. Yeah. <laughs> I said only on TV. Cause DJ ain't gonna let you do that. I said oh okay. god. Only on TV. He up there. He talking to Miss Crochet Braid. Yeah. I said oh. Oh, he stuck with her the whole time. They were looking at him like player, player. Y'all not gonna get y'all boy. Y'all already know. Y'all yeah. over there talking mad cash money about the skit that he done did on his wife. And y'all see him get ready to go down in the ditch. And y'all ain't helping him. Yep. Now, Maurice, you couldn't help nobody. I give you a pass. Yeah, because you was already gone. You was gone yourself. <laughs> but Marso, Marso, you won't show up like the rest of them. See, Marso is me in a group. When I see my people getting two out there, I'm backing up and I'm on guard. I'm posted up. I just... But I ain't gonna let my Look, friends do nothing stupid. I, we just need y'all to slide us the whole clip of what happened at that yeah, strip club. Yeah, Carlos. Cause that was like a, that was like one minute of editing. So y'all just showed us parts of the epic stuff. But I want to see all of it because if that's what we got, yeah. What can happened? you imagine what really did happen? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I want to see. Or, or did or, or Marso? Did you tell them that hey, don't you put my skit out there? You edit all that out right there. <laughs> Because <laughs> your wife already told you, you better not buy shots for nobody. But then the next episode, we see that you spent $1,300. I said, shots ain't that expensive. So that means that so was a what lot the of shots. What you That's doing? a lot of shots, man. What was you doing? Even in Miami. Hmm. That's a lot of shots. So we going to see this week what the hell happened. But y'all boys, it's wild. Yeah, y'all wild, man. Marguerite. I can appreciate it though. I appreciate it though. Oh yeah, I, go out with a yeah, man. Yeah, I, I, you know, we see it in the next episode. Y'all gonna have to explain all that skit to y'all. And mama wives. is there. And mama, <laughs> mama Scott is there. Say so you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Like oh, God, my was looking like <laughs> I can't even say that to mama. <laughs> That's gonna take it. Tisha Charm walked off from him uh -huh. he, she said, "Did you buy shots?" And he said, "Like Michael Minnie." Melody asked on Martell, did you get a lap dance? She's like, oh, I don't recall. I can kind of agree with that because he probably was so drunk. He don't mama what happened. No. He don't mama what happened. <laughs> you got that boy out there doing shots and he don't <laughs> drink. He don't drink. Y'all should have gave him so, one of them cute drinks. Soon as he walked up, they pulled but that much in his glass. I he said, could barely even get it down. I said, oh my God, that's a pro move right there. Yeah. Lord have mercy, y'all. Ooh. 
Woo. Like we said, slide us the whole thing. I would love to see the whole thing, man. But I got this request, because I don't know if y'all too new to the game where <laughs> they, they gonna act like y'all don't need a reunion show. Y'all need a reunion. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. we need to see after everybody has sat down and saw what everybody has said about each other and what was done behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Now I want to see all y'all get together and sit there mm -hmm. and hash that skit out. And I want to get an invitation to be in the goddamn audience. Yeah, man. I was, yeah. Yeah. Now I ain't paying for my flight because I got bills. And, I'm, and I got a savings account. Yeah, y'all go ahead and, <laughs> you know, stop. front us that ticket, you know. <laughs> It's a, it's a tax write-off. Yeah, we pay you back uh, in a few years. With my income tax money. <laughs> yeah. Straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty south. Two up, two down.